interrupt you guys. You were just here. Please come out. This is cruel. Why must you torture me this way? Guys. Guys, I swear. Where are you? It's, it's not fair. They were here. They're real, I swear to God. <laughs> if I've been alone this whole time. Fat and alone. Hey, what's up, everyone? Obviously, that was just a little joke. Um, the reason the guys aren't with me for this is because we had planned to go see um, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood this weekend, and then we realized well, uh, some life stuff happened. We're like, oh, we're not going to be able to do it this weekend. But uh, I had opportunity to see it after work today. This is uh, Thursday, July 25th. This is this recording. I was able to go see it after uh, work and Whitehead was like, well, you should still just do something anyway, because uh, we were going to do a thing for uh, the most recent X-Men movie, but we had um, a technical difficulty, so we weren't able to get that out, and we just wanted to talk about Once Upon a Time in Hollywood for a second. Obviously, I'm the only one seen it. That's why it's just me here, um, and we just want to get something out there pretty quick for it opens everywhere on Friday, but... Um, you know, we're all big fans of Quentin Tarantino. Um, I'd say me and Whitehead probably more than most of the people we've had on the podcast. But Hudson likes them too, and so does so does Ian. He likes his movies. Um, but I won't speak for everyone else that's ever been on. But I do want to say this is probably Quentin Tarantino's most intimate movie he's made. Uh, for the first half, I was... I'm not going to spoil anything. I was definitely like kind of reading... To what subtext he was trying to imply, if that makes sense. And that guy lost it in the last half. Um, I know there's been like rumors that he said this may be his last movie. I don't think it really will be, just because he has so much floating around in his head. Uh, and, and right now the big talk is him doing a Star Trek movie, and uh, really I'm not going to speak about that because uh, Hudson and uh, Whitehead are way more versed in uh, like the Star Trek lore than I am. But th as far as the casting of Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, I just want to say they got everything so right. Um, DiCaprio and, and Brad Pitt I had read earlier before even seeing the film apparently had an amazing dynamic. And they really do just supernatural. It is weird they've never done a movie together before. But uh, it was felt supernatural and there was a lot of... Um, very good, I guess what I'm trying to say is, I don't know, I, they just played off each other so well, and it was so damn charismatic, and it really made the movie for me. I will let everyone know, um, this is a slow burn, which Tarantino has been known to draw things out. I personally am a fan of that. Uh, but it is a it is a slow burn. I don't think it's as long as Hateful Eight, which I loved Hateful Eight. I was actually uh, probably one of the people in the lesser camp that enjoyed Hateful Eight more than, than Django Unchained. But I don't think the running time should stop you from seeing this movie whatsoever. Uh, as far as imagery, though, uh, it was lit beautifully. It was shot beautifully. It was casted well, which I know I said that already. But uh, definitely check it out. It's definitely... Worth seeing if you have time this weekend. Uh, I really just wish my boys could have been with me, but that's okay. Uh, sometimes life happens. We all just sort of, we said months ago we were all going to see this together and just it crept up the weekend for it to come out with work and everything. But we really uh, do enjoy anyone that is listening. Um, I'm, I'm not going to say we're going to for sure do it, but I definitely want Hudson and Whitehead and maybe Ian to see it. And maybe we'll do a little part two follow-up. Because, uh, like I said, there's certain things in the first half that I felt like I had in my mind what the subtext was they were going for. But I could be wrong. I'm definitely curious to see interpretations of this. Because uh, this was definitely probably his most intimate film. I felt like he was speaking a lot about himself. I know I'm kind of repeating myself now because I'm just doing this on the fly by myself right now in my bedroom. But... <clears throat> Uh, I definitely want to say go see this. I read this guy a 10-minute standing uh, ovation at Cannes. 
I can see why. Um, I really hope this isn't his last movie, though, but um, the characters he crafted in this were pretty unique and pretty special if if this is his last movie. But like I said, I don't think it is. But uh, go check this out this weekend, guys, if you get a chance to see this. Uh, fucking Rick Dalton, Cliff Booth for life. That's all I got. We'll see y'all later. Peace.